Who could have predicted that a game against uh, Sheriff Tiraspol would be a game of such importance and significance for Manchester United this season? But <laughs> I think it is. Not only for the fact that the Palace and the Leeds games have been postponed and our next game now, following this game on Thursday, isn't going to be until City away on the 2nd of October. We lost that first game against Real Sociedad in the group. And if you finish second in the Europa League group this year, you have to play, I believe, a playoff game against somebody who finishes third in the Champions League. I think so. You can let me know what you think about that in the comments. But Man United needs to top the group. We need to win against Sharif and then Omanoi before we go and face Real Sociedad away. I'm going to run through what my team selection, what I think Eric Ten Hag's team selection, more importantly, is going to be for this game on Thursday. You can let me know, but it's our last game before this big, well, extra, extra international break. Joy. But you can let me know what you think in the comments below. I'll run through the latest early team news, then my predictions, and we'll speak about every single position. But the team news that we know of from the training pictures that were released on Monday. Luke Shaw is back and training with the squad. He won't be fit to start this game. I'd be very surprised if he is. But he's back in training. Anthony Martial, same thing. Same with Van der Beek and same with Facundo Pellistri. I'm not sure whether they are all back in training. Uh, Donny Van der Beek was pictured going into Carrington on Tuesday morning. But I'm not sure if he's going to be fit. Now, we go here and we take a look at the team that started against Real Sociedad. There were widespread changes. A lot of changes here. But it's still a team that you looked at and went, you know what, that team, there's a lot of changes. but this team should be more than good enough, I think, of beating Real Sociedad. That's what we all thought. Then the game unfolded, and we know what happened in the game. And Eric Ten Hag, I feel like he's learned a lot about this squad now. And I think lessons that he won't particularly want to repeat from that game. And looking at it, I think there's, in my opinion, this game now against uh, Sheriff Terrace Ball, it's a game where this man is just gonna, he's going to play his strongest eleven. I see no reason why he doesn't play his strongest 11. It would have been different had our games not been postponed. Had this been a Europa League game midweek away at Moldova, it would have been a chance for him to use his squad and rotate. Now it's not. We didn't play the weekend. We're not playing the weekend coming up. First team, baby. First team, baby. And these two absolutely are going straight back in to my starting 11 for this game. Unequivocally, Without even considering it, without even thinking about it, Maguire and Lindelof unfortunately showed exactly why they're not starting for Manchester United anymore against um, Real Sociedad. And I don't mean they particularly played that badly. I'll be honest, neither of them, their performances were outrageously poor. That's not a witch hunt against them. They're just too slow. They are just too slow on the ball. It takes them a split second longer to make decisions. I even did a separate video about it. Uh, and I feel very strongly on it. So I think that back five comes straight back into this team. Straight back into this game. It's by far and away our best five. Malasia and Delo, best choice fullbacks. Delo has been so impressive this season. He really, really is. I almost feel like I need to do a separate video on him. He's been that good. And De Gea, he'll obviously keep his spot. He actually kept his spot against Sociedad as well. But without a shadow of a doubt, these two come back in. Martinez for the leadership that he offers. And I don't I mean I don't need to explain it to you. You you can see how much better we are as a team with these two in. Absolutely, that has to happen. In the same way that I don't think the Casemiro is going to be starting this game here away at Sharif Tiraspol. And I never thought I'd be seeing the day when I did this and wasn't doing it in some sort of sarcastic fashion. But I'm taking Casemiro out of my first team and I'm putting Scott McTominay in. That's how good he has been playing as that. Numbers, I mean, it's not a number six per se, but it effectively is in that midfield three. It's the balance that Matomane offers in the deeper role. It seems to be working for him, and he's playing out of his skin. Absolutely, he's got to be starting there. And of course, this man, he had a stinker against Real Sociedad. And Fred is somebody who sort of reiterated on, on multiple occasions. I remember when we got the chance to interview him a couple of years ago. He said, "My, I prefer to be closer to the edge of the opposition's box. That's where I want to play. And he got that opportunity against Real Sociedad. But in that role there, Fred was just so wasteful. Any time he received the ball, not every single time, but the majority of the times, he rarely found a teammate. His passing in those sort of tight, tight spaces simply put, was nowhere near good enough. 
Well, I think Bruno absolutely comes back in. And I don't even need to tell you. I don't even need to mention this guy's in my start, strongest starting 11. I had a conversation about it with um, you all in the live stream this morning. It's a, it's a toss-up between Ericsson and Martinez as to who you think has been the most influential signing so far, Eric Ten Hag. And there really are fair arguments for both of them. Christian Eriksen goes straight back into that starting 11. He is in our strongest 11. And that, by some margin, is our most balanced and best midfield three so far this season. Casemiro, I want him to be knocking Scott McTominay out of the team by the end of the season. Not because I want Scott McTominay out of the team, but because that's the competition I want. If Casemiro is going to knock McTominay out of the team, I mean, that's, he's, got, he's got to raise his levels to what we've seen at Real Madrid. And again, imagine me saying Casemiro has got to raise his levels to Scott McTominay. It still, it still sounds like I'm being sarcastic, but just what we're seeing from Casemiro, taking him a little bit longer to settle in, and maybe this little break is going to help him. But Scott McTominay, Ericsson, and Bruno, absolutely, as my midfield three. Now, up front, there's more questions to ask. And I don't think Ronaldo gets in this starting 11 to face Sheriff. And I don't think that's an outrageous call in any way, shape, or form. I don't think it's a witch hunt. I don't think it's an agenda, but so many people like using that word against me, even when I kind of speak truths and facts on Ronaldo. Simply put, Ronaldo was poor against um, Real Sociedad. He, his best chances came from headers, cracking header, just a little bit offside. Ronaldo of old, younger legs, he would have stepped up a couple more yards and wouldn't have been offside. Ronaldo just looks leggy at the moment. I'm hoping that the international break can sort of bring some more energy back into his legs. But because Martial is injured, we effectively only have one option here at this particular moment in time. Now, that one option got us two cracking goals against Arsenal. Played an absolute blinder. But he actually played that more off the left-hand side than he did play that through the middle. But I think we're looking at a front three. Elanga going off there. Jaden Sancho coming on. Again, I think our front three, in my opinion, strongest front three at this moment in time would pick itself. I would argue that strongest, mid, that strongest trio in midfield at the moment picks itself. And I would argue that back five, it picks itself. Manchester United, in my opinion, right at this particular moment in time, and this will chop and change across the course of the season. I think Ten Hag's got his strongest 11. Seen it in those four games. And that game against Sociedad was just such a massive expose on this squad on the fact that there's so many players in there that just they're just a bit short they're just they're short of that intensity required to play ten hogs ball and i say this as a compliment for the fact that i can predict you know hopefully i can predict what our starting 11 would be now it depends whether you think that eric ten hog is actually going to make changes he's actually going to go you know what even though we lost this sociedad game even though we've got Palace and Leeds postponed, and there's no actual football until the 2nd of October after this game, that he's not going to play his strongest 11. I personally would be very surprised. I wouldn't really see the point. It just wouldn't make any sense, in my opinion. And therefore, I'm going for that starting 11 there that's impressed me so much in these last few games, in particular the game against Arsenal. That, in my opinion, was our biggest test so far, and a test where everybody came through shining. Anthony... I don't think he was that effective on his debut. I don't think he was overly effective against Real Sociedad, but he scored on his debut. And Anthony will, across the course of the season, be delivering moments which change games for Manchester United. In the same way that that debut goal against Arsenal changed the game for United. That front three, Martial will be interested to see what happens when he can be fit. And hopefully, again, looking at silver linings to the postponements, Martial getting a couple more weeks to get regain his fitness. That is a good thing. But for me... Back five, set. Midfield three, set. And front three, pretty set. Sancho has been pretty out. I mean, he's not been terrible, but he's not been the Sancho that we saw in preseason, has he? Not quite yet. But that'll be my starting 11. That's our strongest 11. I see no reason with the games being postponed and the break we've got coming up next with the international break, why Ten Hag just doesn't. Sort of look at this as a Premier League game. Strongest 11, best performance. Let's go out there. Bury that result from the first game against Sociedad. Three points against Sharif. You can't take him. Is that side of Sharif or Sheriff? I don't know. I'm going to go Sheriff from now on. They beat Real Madrid away last season. Was it last season? They won at the Bernabeu. 
don't go in there with complacency. That's exactly why that starting 11 is there, why Martinez is there as well. I think we'll breeze it. I think we'll win, and I think it should be a strongest 11. You can let me know what you think, though, in the comments below, but it's the last game before a massive, massive break. Comes at a bad time considering our momentum, but you let me know what you think about the starting 11 and who will be in yours. Make sure you subscribe if you're new.